You know, periodically we hear of an idea that is supposed to revolutionize the way we all build guitars or change the way we play our guitars. And you're not going to hear me say something like that. But what I can tell you is that many years ago I had an idea that changed the way that I make guitars. And it's called the Falbo Intention Bridge Design. I'm going to explain a little bit to you about how it works and why it works and some of the concepts that go into making the sound and the voice that my Falbo guitars equipped with an intention bridge system are going to give you. You know, every luthier, every guitar designer has their own unique way of bracing the acoustic guitar's top. How much bracing, where the X is going to come, uh, how many pieces of bracing, how thick it is, how wide it is, how tall, if it's triangular or rounded, all those things come together to give an acoustic guitar its voice. But the primary function of this bracing is really to stop the near 200 pounds of string tension from just ripping the bridge right off the top of the guitar and caving the whole thing, you know, in up front and pulling it up behind it. Um, and it's really like this. I mean, if you have a guitar string coming in and here's the bridge saddle, in the traditional bridge design, the string comes down, and here's the ball end, and, you know, here's the bridge pin holding it in place, right? Well, with that arrangement, when this string is being pulled that way, pulled towards the nut, all that really turns into rotational torque. So if this is the top of the guitar, really this all starts to look like a big circle here. And what happens is behind the bridge, it wants to belly up, and in front of the bridge, it wants to cave in. So in front of the bridge, this is where our X brace converges, and behind the bridge, this is where we have. A, you know, one or two transverse braces that come across and try to protect this guitar from basically uh, lifting and exploding. Some guitars take the string in across the saddle and run them through the bridge so that the ball end is still riding on the top of the guitar. But all of this is still converted into rotational torque. The same thing happens. And on those, some of those bridges, you'll see them. The bridge will start to separate from the top right in that area. And really all the same responsibilities on the bracing are required in order to deal with this some 200 pounds of pressure. Of course, one way to eliminate rotational torque on the guitar's top is to just take that tension off the guitar's top. So if you have a string coming in, it goes across the bridge, and then it just goes off of here to a trapeze tailpiece that attaches to the end block, well, that's one way to eliminate this rotational torque. But the problem there is a guitar sound completely changes. A trapeze tailpiece hollow body guitar still sounds fantastic, but it has its own unique voice. So it doesn't replicate the sound of a flat top with a glued on bridge. Let's think about it like this. If the string comes in across the bridge saddle and it goes down into the guitar where the ball end is right here, here's your top. If I attach this ball end to the top of the guitar in this area, then all this energy is still pushing the top up and much of it is still converted into rotational torque. So nothing has really changed. However, if I take this ball end and I attach it to the top behind the ball end, then when this ball end is trying to pull this way, that energy is converted into counter-rotational torque. So by inverting the way that the ball end is attached to the guitar's top, you can basically counteract that same rotational torque that would have been placed on the guitar's top, thus pulling the guitar up, nosing it down in front of the bridge, etc., etc. Now the secret to the intention bridge design lies in how much or how little rotational torque we're going to counteract. If I come in with the string across the bridge saddle like this, and I come at an angle like this, or I come like this, or if I had come like this, all of those angles change the amount of rotational torque that I'm taking away or leaving in the top. If I attach this over here, or I attach this guy over there, or I attach this one over here, if I spread it out, all of those things have a different effect 
on the rotational torque and on the sound of the guitar. And just what does the intention bridge design do to the sound of the guitar? With the intention bridge design, I'm free to design a top with as much or as little rotational torque that I want inside of it. Now, when I remove that rotational torque, what you're left with is this up down excursion. Okay? So, like a speaker cone going in and out, like a drum head going up and down, this is where the bulk of your sound is produced. So, you get more amplitude out of the same amount of vibration. The guitar top is more sensitive. There's an extended frequency response on the high end. There's an extended frequency response on the low end. But, you know, the reality is I could talk about more this, more that, more sensitivity. What it really translates into is when you pick up and play a guitar with the intention bridge design, there's really more you.